Hey, welcome everybody to the gardens, the untold story. Anyway, you guys, uh, we had a fantastic conversation before we came on guys, but uh, I'm just going to say uh, Def31, cheers to you too. Uh, great to see you in from the East Coast. Oh, and Andy's playing. Okay, I got to get the comments up. Yeah, right. Okay. You guys, we were talking about worms. I no, see Def31. Hey, Def31, how you doing? I see you, Lily. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Steam Yard. Hi, Steam Yard. <laughs> Hi to the world, because who knows? How long this is going to be out there and people are going to watch this and andy we should be halfway literate and intelligent and we're supposed to be talking about something about soil erosion prevention yeah, yeah. okay so where did you want to go with soil prevention or erosion prevention well you know um what's but what's going on right now on the planet is that people are having the famous idea hi everybody Hi, silly Lily, that what we're doing is we're pre preventing the soil from building up the way it normally should, and that we're actually causing more soil erosion than ever before. You know that uh, farmers, when they plow, when they turn something out, when they, they go through the thing and they turn it over? Yeah, they plow actually, the field up. That's really, 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 really very bad. It's yeah, I agree, 100%. Bad. It's extremely bad. And it also people think that cars and 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 um, you know airplanes and things like that are causing the carbon uh, uh, buildup, carbon dioxide buildup. But what what is, what's happening is that we have the soil actually takes in carbon. The biology is built from carbon. Without carbon, there is no biology. Right. So when when we rototilled, we actually destroy. All that carbon that's been there, and we release it. Kill it, and, release the an, re, kill the biology, and release the carbon into the atmosphere. Right. So yeah. they don't they don't understand that forty. I I read somewhere in a in a, in a science digest that forty percent of the carbon in, in the atmosphere is released from soil uh, bad farming practices, bad farming mm -hmm. practices, and in soil erosion, it, 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 I, I'm doing a series now on uh, tree care. And trees are Mother Nature's lungs. They take in carbon dioxide and they give off oxygen. But one of the things they also do is their root systems hang on to the soil. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have any trees growing or anything with roots, you don't, your soil tends to um, blow away. Here in Malibu, it just blows away. There's no soil. You get to you have this layer which is the clay, which is the subsoil. And talk about soil erosion, there's no soil to the point where there's literally no soil around. And so the mm -hmm. biology is very different in clay, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? You know, so if you have something growing in, in a clay environment, it's like it's like they're growing in a container. Yeah. Tra right? Everything traps the water. It doesn't allow uh, the water to flow away from the plant and you get a drown good drowning situation. Right, so you have you have the so the water is, is, is and I tell people, do you know what happens when you uh, take clay and water, mix it together, and add heat? Get a pot. <laughs> you get, you yeah. get right. It's called hard pan, and so that that hard pan is not soil. People think everything is soil that's in the ground, right? Everything here is soil, mm -hmm. when reality is not, and that's. And that's how we, I, I'm actually, I'm an arborist, so I, I work a lot with trying to explain to people, you don't have any soil. You, mm -hmm. Your soil, and to me, soil erosion is also, comes down, there are different types of soil erosion. Just look mm -hmm. at the homeowner. So the homeowner, his or her soil erosion is really very simple. The, the, the gardeners take away anything that falls down and hits the ground. Yeah. To me, that's soil erosion. It takes away, it doesn't allow the 100%. soil to 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 build up it doesn't allow the yeah. mother nature to make soil so soil oh you you it's a horrible creature yeah oh my god i thought it was a monster i was gonna oh he yeah, is a monster mud. okay he mud. is a monster believe me and this guy named mud hi mud no <laughs> it's dylan mud? we were just talking about mud oh mud okay hey guys <laughs> <laughs> and it's it is <coughs> 
you was, people think that soil erosion has to do with when it rains it washes the soil down mm -hmm. that's one type of soil erosion because we don't have the biology or the the, the system in place that keeps the soil holds the soil together well and that's what mother nature is doing when those leaves fall it's it's a a, a housing complex for the biology and it protects the the dirt under, underneath and you can get moisture and once you have the moisture then you can have a living system if that's taken away by the gardeners that's definitely is a, a form of erosion that a lot of people don't even consider exactly silly leaves basically says about farmers and how they can actually uh, be good farmers if they started treating the soil as a living soil the mm -hmm. big yeah. difference like it's supposed to be right the the then that hits a, hits a problem right on the nose because uh, I, I, I tell gardeners all the time, you, you're aware that the soil is alive, don't you? You're aware that you're basically killing everything that you're doing here, right? They use chemical fertilizer is a form of soil erosion. Chemicals are really bad. Hi, diggity dank. How you doing, man? It's, it's a form of soil erosion. To me, soil erosion is anything that stops Mother Nature from making soil. And then, and then we, do, we, do weird, we do the weirdest things. That only man can, only man can do, you know. And to me, uh, soil erosion comes up down. For example, when you are uh, overwatering, and the and the city water causes damage to the soil soil biology, and, and which in turn the soil biology doesn't work. And if the biology doesn't work, the soil becomes dead soil. And if it's dead soil, it'll just disappear. It'll just the wind will come and blow Wait. it away. What happened in the in the, uh, the, the dust dirty thirties and the dust, the dust bowl. bowl isn't and they decided that oh that was caused by the farmers working up their fields and everything was drying out and just going poof because the life went out of it exactly right and that was like a, another form of soil erosion you damn See, right it's a big it, one it was a big one and Mother Nature came and went <sighs> blew everything away you had the great dust bowl yeah and and they didn't treat it. And they still don't. People still don't. The majority of farmers and gardeners having the faintest idea that they're basically caretakers of the soil. It's like mm -hmm. you know, you have an animal. <laughs> you have to take it. You have to treat it differently than it was a than if it was a statue or a non living thing. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's and that's that's it in a, in a nutshell. Where city water turns plants yellow. City water is toxic. <laughs> it's literally toxic. Just, just a little bit. One of the things I was I, I'm uh, doing in my soil health series, and this is number two. I'm talking about water. Tip number two, uh, it's about water, and and we have turned water into toxic. Even when, when, when even when it rains, right? You have acid rains nowadays, right? You don't even have clean water most of the time because it's the air is so toxic. Mother Nature. It, 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 I tell people if, if if a giant spaceship was to come in on Earth and take all human beings off the planet, it would take thousands of years for Mother Nature to reestablish balance again. If it's lucky, I mean, okay, so you have nuclear power plants. The, those things, radiation destroys the biology left and right, whether it be mm -hmm. living uh, people, birds, whatever, you know. And without that, and that takes thousands and thousands of years for the radiation to dissipate if it dissipates i don't know what happens here it just could reverse back to a, a stable form and that's that's soil erosion so we're looking at soil erosion in so many different ways the cities cities are very good at, at soil erosion uh, governments <laughs> are very are very good at soil erosion so we get hey uh good doing good andy needed this week energy tonight oh cool man cool just uh hold your breath for a little while and it's just <laughs> and breathe it in, you know, just hold it in there, man. And us, us human beings, there is a, 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 one of the things I like about this group is that you people already understand the basics. I don't have to teach you, man, this soil is alive. You have to treat it with respect. You see, and, and most of the people, I, when I go to uh, people's properties, I, I used to, I tell people, I can tell the condition of the person by looking at their property. Mm -hmm. it, they mirror it mirrors you so i i went to one place and the ants were going don't go there don't go there if the ants were going there i go holy shit the ants are not going on this property 
And sure enough, these people come out, they were sick. Really, really, oh, man, I don't know what's going They've on. They've been yeah. breathing in those toxic chemicals for how many decades, Andy, not even knowing that they're not only killing the life around them, they're killing themselves. Breathing in, they've been eating it. It's, yes. It's, it's a combination of such a weird, it's the weirdest thing because, you know, the doctors don't, they only really, I was, I, I, I'm going to stick my neck out and say, doctors don't treat you like you're a living thing. Yeah. It, it's, it's just money making. It's a way to make money. I don't care what you're eating, what you're doing. Just come here every week and give me money. That's what it comes down to it, pretty much. They don't treat you. I mean, it depends on the doctor. If you have a good homeopathic doctor or a naturalist doctor, they will say, first thing they will say, what are you eating? What are you putting in your body? Right? And so that's yeah. just basically the same thing I tell, I tell people. What are you feeding your soil? What do you mean feeding the soil? Do I feed the soil? That's ridiculous. It is a super moon tonight, by the way. It's good. Yeah, I know. I, I put that up there. So yeah, Super Ness is going to go for a walk in the super moon, and, and I'm going to go for a drive, and, and I'm going to watch it. It's supposed to be a blue moon uh, from my it's understanding. It's a blue moon. Yeah, it's a blue yeah. blue moon. And that's second really second uh, full moon in, in the month. In the month. It's, and it's, uh, this, this, uh, it's, a, it's, in, it's in Aquarius, too. Okay. And I'm not it, into that. I'm not far into that signs, Andy. I never got into that hippie woo woo stuff when I was younger. You know, I, well, I don't it's know. not it's not woo woo. It's just the basic science of how the how the planets are revolving and you know, what they do. How, yeah. how energy affects you. You know, uh, and how the system works. You you get to understand. It. But it's a really interesting uh, month for manifestation and for creating a, a path forward. Because anything that you decide now, you, it can happen. You just have to manifest it. And yeah. for me, for me, it's always been a an, an issue of uh, I just met uh, my new customer. I'm going to see on, on Saturday. Basically, he's a filmmaker, and he says, um, "What is it? What is it? What is your goal? <laughs> what is my goal in life?" Well, my goal in life is really to heal the earth. That's simple as yeah. that. Yep. And I tell people, heal the earth and you and you heal yourself. And Andy, yes, I want to thank you for having that in your heart, brother. I really do. Oh, I, I and, and it, I, I've been that way since 1970. <laughs> Even and it was and, a good acid trip, man. It was. Oh a yeah, good it, was acid a trip. it was a really good one. It was like Mother Nature said, "WTF, WTF." I'm going. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I don't know what to tell these people. Mother Nature says. Human beings are the cancer. We are the cancer. Okay. I, I also tell people we are the soil, if you like that. Okay. Because yeah. we are I, I think people would prefer to hear it that way than they are the cancer. Uh, exactly. Yeah, right. we, we are the soil. Our biology and the soil's biology is, is supposed to be a, in, in harmony with each other. And it isn't, man. It isn't at all anymore. Uh, I heard that too, and it's going to happen. Uh, not just cannabis; uh, cannabis is going to be rescheduled. Three, they're also going to reschedule uh, certain types of psychedelics, like mushrooms, and, and uh, they're already making legal. There, it's already legal to to. Uh, uh, I belong to several different churches. You can, you're allowed to have a, a worship. Yeah, allowed to use any of medicinal plants, psychedelic plants, if you if it's part of your worship. But yeah. well, that's going to happen, uh, and I think right now it's uh, the. I don't like being politics political, but I think what's happening the one side is not going to do it because the side that wants to do it is saying it's all politics. You're doing that so people will vote for you, so we're not going to do it. But when it's their turn, they're going to do it, just like making pot legal. There's no re there's no reason why it's illegal. There's no reason whatsoever why. Well, no, then you know it's it's like tomatoes aren't illegal to grow. It's a plant, and right. and cannabis is the same thing, and psilocybin mushrooms are the same thing. They're just plants, natural uh, occurring on this planet. And considering our endocannabinoid system is supposed to have those cannabinoids in it to help it, and they've barred it for so long, even in in the hemp end. And you know, the that we was wanted really funny. To come they, back. They, they made hemp illegal right along with marijuana. It was like, really, yeah, really. Did you, you know, did yeah. you know that the um, I have friends that are growing hemp that aren't allowed to feed it to their cattle 
because it's not a registered feed and uh, they make beef jerky and they have to list what the feed is. It's ridiculous. Hemp is a wonderful uh, substance for, for animals. Do you remember the Boston Tea Party? Yes, I heard about that place. You know, it yeah, was you in know, Boston. You know, what, you know what it was that we were protesting against, right? Hemp. Hemp, hemp. and hemp. It yeah. was hemp that we were. And, and so the um, when we came here, uh, England said, okay, you guys are going to grow hemp for us because we use hemp for rope. We use hemp for the sails. We use hemp for everything. And so it wasn't yeah. tea that they threw overboard. It was hemp. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, and and it's interesting, too. That, okay. Uh, I found this on the web. Oh, that's the tea that came to. Oh, sure. You're two timing us, Andy, with uh, uh, Alexa there, you know. Yeah, right. oh, Siri. Uh, Siri, Siri, sorry. Uh, Siri came yeah. up and started talking to me about him. <laughs> 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 sorry. Hey, man. It was... Talk to me later. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the, the reason why marijuana became illegal and so happy is because people were using it for healing. Simple as that. They weren't using the chemicals that the pharmaceutical companies wanted us to buy. They were using the marijuana. And marijuana can be made into many different ways as a, as a healing product. It's just like any mm -hmm. any herb you grow, any 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 uh, mushrooms are healings. All Everything in the, on the planet, Mother Nature gives to us for healing. We can use it for healing, like ayahuasca. You name the the product that's out there, you know. I mean, I, I this is one product that's really really cool. Called it's called um, uh, it's called holy basil. Okay, holy, holy basil. Holy basil and holy basil is basil. Okay. It's holy, but it's holy, man. It's got a bunch of holes in it, doesn't it? No, 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 no. No. Oh, okay, okay. And guess and guess who grew it? The American Indians used holy yeah. basil. And mm -hmm. so when when the uh, the the parlors, you know the uh, the monks will come here from Spain and walk around, you know, yeah, they they did not like people worshiping and using that to to get you know in touch with nature to 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 talk to nature and all. They didn't like that. And so they said, so it's only one God, right? And you you can't talk to that God. Your God, you have to talk to our God. And, and, you know, the philosophy of there's only one God. Well, we're still talking to the same God. But Holy Basil, they, they went around and they tried to eradicate it everywhere they saw it. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere they see Lily, Lily says that Alexa's trying to steal the show. She's always trying to steal the show. But It's like Dylan when Dylan jumped onto my lap, okay? Everybody goes, oh, puppy! Oh, that's so cute. So going yeah, back man. to soil rushing, look. There, there's a chunk of soil erosion happening all the time with the homeowners, and oh, with yeah. the farmer, and with the farmers, homeowners and farmers. Yeah, you know, and you, I you was know, actually the, guilty of that, Andy, because I was actually raking up my grass and taking it and feeding it to my neighbor's chickens because I was buying eggs for my neighbor and I wanted his chickens to be healthy. Not even thinking, oh yeah, my soil needs that too. Uh, yeah, and that's a form of soil erosion all the time in the city. Yeah. Do that. Uh, the military do, do that all the time. You know, the military bases, uh, governments, uh, their properties yep. are sterile. And people have gotten, this one lady I know, uh, a leaf falls. She runs out there, grabs a leaf, throws it in the trash can. I'm going, uh, 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 <laughs> you know, and it, and it's, oh, and, then she, and then she complains because these things are not doing well. I said, well, yeah. you stop. You, you, you're a form of co uh, soil erosion. H human beings are a form of soil erosion. Why is my root growing? I can't read it down there. What does it say? What is okay, hold on, hold there? on. I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. Put it up. Why am my root, am I root, root growing out of the top? Is this root? Is this? Yes. Right. When the roots are trying to get out of the container, it, yeah, it's root bounds. You, you can literally pull it up, and there's like a big, giant ball root all the way around it. As a matter of fact, you're not careful. The root will, will grab you. <laughs> the roots will come out and grab you. They did a movie on that, okay? Uh, something about Feed Me Seymour, <laughs> you know, some big plant. Yeah, was, you yeah know, I saw that. Movie. I like that. That was my yeah. one of my favorite shows. It was a big, it was a big thing, yeah, you know. Yeah. And it would eat, Feed eat, me it would eat people. It would eat yeah. people, right. And I really loved that. I thought that was absolutely wonderful. And the kids loved it, too. <laughs> I, okay, I, guys, we got to be afraid of Andy's. He's breeding some really interesting plants now, you know. 
Yeah, and I, I so I would sit in there with uh, with the kids, and they would laugh, and they would have a great time. The parents yeah, yeah. were going, "My kids are so weird. They're, they're laughing because <laughs> this plant, this yeah. big giant plant, is eating humans." Yeah, and I, yeah. And, I, and I always think it's about time because I think that I think that human beings uh, have a long way to go. To it's all about consciousness, and we seem to have gone down this path. There are. It's a small group of human beings that they go, oh, wow, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm grateful to be in paradise. The whole thing about Garden of Eden, okay, that's another story right there. Because, you know, we actually are living in a Garden of Eden if we allow the Garden of Eden to do its thing, basically. You know what I mean? If we quit breaking up the soil and throwing it away, every time mm-hmm. something happens, we clean it up. It stirs us, a sterile environment. So, Andy, okay, let, let, let's go away from that for a second. Now, we okay. talked about what it's happening. Um, what are some of the solutions um, to this problem other than, because they're not going to stop doing what they're doing, so what can we as gardeners, if we're you know going into that type of a situation, what are our steps to make it nice and clean and neat for them so they like it, but still feed the, the soil and the biology and create the soil? Uh, I, I started a long, long time ago teaching people the five R's. You know what the three R's are, right? Oh, hell no. You better tell me, Matt. You don't know what the three and R's five? are? And five of them? Okay, you're giving me palpitations, Andy. Okay, come on. Just give. Give. Just give what? Come up with the three R's. Anybody out there know what the three R's is? Come on. One of you people can, will know what the three R's is. It's a, it's a, know. everybody knows what the three, my dog knows what, I don't have a dog. My cat knows what the three are. <laughs> oh, thanks. I, I'm not even as good as the cat, but I have no freaking clue where you're heading with three oh, R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Those, that's oh, that, okay. I'm thinking plants and I'm that, thinking those are, those three, three R's in plants and like, what, what? And then, and then I added two more rethink and replant. And so what people do, do it, should do is very, very practical. Learn how to recycle everything. Don't throw it away, but learn how to recycle. And there's a really easy way to recycle, and that's making compost. So instead of throwing your grass clippings away and your leaves away, yeah. I, I have this one uh, customer that I talked to her into getting a shredder. The machine, yeah, 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 yeah. right? Right? So and I said the other day she had a truckload of stuff hauled away. A tree, a tree guy came and cut, 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 and just took it away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just hauled it away. I said, from now on, you're not taking anything out. Nothing's going out of your place. The only thing that's going to go out is things you cannot recycle, right? And then let them deal with that. And the plastic and metals and glass. Even glass yeah, yeah. can be recycled. Anything you know, organic you want to keep. That's you want the thing. To keep so anything organic. So the process of making compost is the key to it because you mm-hmm. you take everything, you put it into a form that the biology likes, and you put it back on the soil. You so are you them. are you getting them to buy turners or are you you having them set up like a, a, a pit or how are you setting up compost at, at these facilities? Or well, these there, there are some places that are different, but most of them, because it's a, it's a city environment, you know, the city comes down and you have a big pile of compost and they go, oh, cow, what are you doing now? As a matter of fact, the, the, yeah. city, the city is one of the places that you really need to make some changes because... Here in Malibu, they haul tons and tons and tons. I mean, literally thousands of tons of horse manure away, and they dump it mm-hmm. somewhere. And so, uh, I, I what I do is I, I help them. Uh, I create uh, compost bins, bins, nice bins. And yeah. I, I, I talk, I'm on. I'm part. Of, I, I work with the city a lot because I tell them, look, we can show people how they can make compost. Right. It'll reduce your waste. You don't have to go have truckloads full of this garbage that you go. You should go to the city dump. The city dump is one big giant pile, which then they cover up, and then ten years later or twenty years. Well, look later, at what they... Layden's talking about and gum and, and that ground up organic material that they're just you know perpetually uh, throwing out in a field, basically, and they just keep turning it for year upon year, and they're making but, nothing but money by doing it. But they could fix it very quickly and very easily. So that's a, one of the things that people really need to understand is basically uh, stop taking things out that's supposed to be go back in the ground. And if you really are, are a, a neat fanatic, then you make the comp, make compost. And you learn mm-hmm. how to make compost, and you learn. And and one of the pro- problem is people say, "I don't want to add manure to my compost. I don't want to have animal manure in my compost. That's ooh." And then we're going to put it in the vegetable garden, and we're going to eat that shit. 
are we going to eat a lettuce that grew in manure? I'm going, ay, que estaba chido, me dejaste pasar el contigo, yo no entiendo nada. Yeah, I español, speak English? No, I don't speak in no español, okay? I don't speak in no French. I don't speak in a lot of things, okay? English pretty good, though. Some Sometimes, sometimes. The wife says, you know, I only listen sometimes, but I'm trying yeah. to listen. That's right, David. We leaves. So yeah. I, I'm trying to get, uh, so I'm, I'm in the process of giving workshops through the, through the city where the city said people come sit down. We'll teach you how to cool. recycle it. All your products that you have that you're throwing away, you know, uh, and uh, so that's a big issue. That's a big deal right there. Teaching people how to, and you want to have animal manure. The only type of animal manures you don't want are meat eaters. You don't want your dog poop in there. Now I do have a I do have a question, Andy. Like I know a lot of people are concerned with uh, with horse manure because they use so much um, antibiotics, etc um in the, in the animals and people are really concerned uh about that so what would you say uh to those concerns and then we'll get on to perpetual had uh, a statement too well the the one of the things that that um first of all i teach people if your the horses are healthy you don't need the antibiotics you don't need to give them that so if you're giving them antibiotics because there's something wrong and you're not paying attention and so yeah. like for example, we were talking about diatomaceous earth. It's a really very good tool to use. I use food grade diatomaceous earth. I give it to myself. I give it to the animals. I yeah. teach people how to give it to the horses. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what I make my my gel caps is with the uh, ground up uh, cannabis flower and diatomaceous earth. So it, it's a great source of silica in our bodies. What I do is I use uh, charcoal uh, from mm -hmm. come from bamboo. And I add I I I I, I add the food grade diet to make sure earth to that, and I give it to myself. But yeah. So if if uh, there's this, if you if if you have to use antibiotics, and into in your and to the animals, it's also too. Uh, I can talk a little bit about what happens when when humans take all this stuff and how they do make mm -hmm. sewer sludge, because it's the very same process. You end up having all these medicine and stuff in in the in this well the yeah. city sells it as compost but if you analyze it, you're going to see it hey where does this all this stuff come from is from people well and the thing is if they left it if they composted it let it cycle and and let the biology add it uh for a longer period of time the biology is going to break those components down if there's the right biology it's like you know uh the glyphosate um there's biology that breaks that down very very easily and you can do a lot of things very quickly with the right biology um and i i think a, a lot of that animal manure like silly lily said it, it needs to be well aged um and that's it the, the biology needs to eat at it for a while so that if those compounds are there they're broken down first so what what i do is i tell i i teach uh people that uh if you there's a certain minimum size you have to make your compost because then it will, it will, it will heat up. It goes up to almost 200 degrees. Thermophilic, yeah. Which is uh, hot enough to break down almost anything, especially antibi yeah. antibiotics and stuff like that. So the problem when people are making compost is they're not really allowing it to get to heat up. It's a small, tiny thing. They, they, they don't make it large enough. You know those little tumblers? That doesn't do yeah. anything. It's just a small little thing. They put it in there. They tumble it. And so there's not the biology doesn't function in that, nor does it function. Well, in the actually, world. actually, I have uh, 45 gallon tumblers, and okay. it's a matter of keeping it at 70 percent uh, moisture content. Right. And then I, I actually don't do a thermophilic. Uh, I do a cold, but I so I turn it every day. I bring it up to about that 120, 130. So I'm yeah. not killing any biology, but I let it go for a a, a month. You know, I keep it going every day. I'm turning it every day for a month. Um, and then the biology is, is uh, right. all the bad biology has been consumed by all the good biology, all the nutrients, because um, I use a lot of rock dust, uh, the same as you do, um, when I'm building a soil. And uh, that is allowing that to be made more plant available um, because it's already been biodigested. So they, so there, the, there are these tumblers which are really tiny little things. <laughs> yeah, know, like, yeah. I think I've seen them like they're, 
they got yeah, like this just little foot by they foot. They also have one that's stacked up, so it's a tiny little thing, and it doesn't really produce anything. Uh, and so one, one of the things that I, that I tell people, get yourself a shredder, break everything up, it speeds everything up, yep. very speeds things up. And you do want to have, so the one of the things about aged manure is that there's a, there's a way that when you, uh, if you happen to have animals, there's a way that you can bind the minnows together very fast so that, you yep. know, as you age your, your age your manure, you're not losing min minerals. Because what happens is that people yep. have a pile sitting up there for a long time, rain stuff. And by the time they actually use it, it's one-tenth the amount of mineral contents that it had before. Yep. So you well, and, it, and it's it's volatizing all the nitrogen, etc. Uh, depending, like that's you don't want it to go stinky, that's for sure, because then you are just making bad shit, man. Then you don't want that shit. So it's it's it, so it's a process of uh, understanding how to make the compost. I when I yeah. in Florida, I would be making. I made a hundred bags of compost a week in their fifty pound bags, mm -hmm. and so. I, I would, I would, uh, I literally would buy, I bought a, a manure spreader. Yeah. It's a yeah. big machine that you dump stuff in and it goes around. I, I, I'm from, I'm from farm country. I know what a manure spreader is. A big box with a big blade that goes like this and it spits shit. Okay. And, and it stress it everything up. Place. It stress everything yep. up. But you want to add the rock dust to it immediately, immediately when you, so when people have animals, I tell them sprinkle the rock dust on it because it's also, uh, part diatomaceous earth that controls the flies and stuff like that. And 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 you also have to learn how to, uh, you can speed up the process. A lot of homeowners can't really do big giant piles because they're big yeah. piles that are taller than me, six well, foot. Spe especially in your area because I don't know, do you guys have rats? I know a lot of people in the coastal areas. And like I, I'm pretty rat free in Alberta, which is one of the wild things about Alberta. But um I know a lot of people are complaining uh, about the rats getting into the, the compost pile. So they have to uh, have it in uh, like an enclosed area that the animals can't break into. So what happens is, is that I tell people it's the same thing with ants. Because when uh, rats and ants have moved into your compost pile, you don't have an active compost pile. Okay. If the compost pile is functioning and, and working. The animals won't go in there. The one of the things I teach people is instead of taking food and dumping it into your compost pile, mm -hmm. which we're inviting the animals to come and eat it because they will come yeah. and get it before, you want you can grind that up. You can either put it in a blender, right? Put it in a blender, blend it up into a liquid form, or there's, there comes a shredder. I love the shredder. The shredder shreds everything okay. up. Uh, have you seen the one that uh, – um... It, you plug it in on your counter. You put your your I organics in, and it I I it sucks it dry, dehydrates it. I guess would be the right uh, and, and it idea it up behind it. A little shredding thing, yeah, in there. yeah. Shreds it up, and you have this really nice little black stuff that you can then. Yeah. Use. Now I don't know if there's any biology left alive in there with that thing freaking shredding everything like that. So I don't well, know. It's it, it's really very good just to break down the, the components of it. You really want to add it to yeah. a biological a live product. You want to add it to your to your to your. Con the pro problem with that, if people think this is really good, where I'm going to go feed my plants with it, that's not the, the, that's not going to work because you you really need to then process it right and then then process it so that it comes out a living organism that's rich in the trace minerals and all that stuff. Yeah. What they're yeah. using now, it's not going, it's not, and on top of that, the, the food that they're buying is totally deficient in minerals anyway. There's right? yeah. nothing in there, right? And, yeah. And yeah. What's interesting too is that when you, if you grow organically, your food doesn't decompose. It doesn't rot. It doesn't rot. If you, yeah. if you grow without the, the, the energy, it rots. So if you grow chemically grown food, it'll rot. I've done tests many times. I've shown to people, this is organic apple. This is not organic apple. Watch it and <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> and you see the yeah. non-organic apple will rot. Mm -hmm. And so the, the process of teaching people how to recycle everything that they, that the earth is giving them, and not taking it away. Once they realize that that's more valuable than almost anything they can do. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so it's very, and then they will have more and more living soil. So are you getting that, uh, like, obviously you're, you're doing well, Andy, are, are you getting a lot of people that are starting to understand 
you know, what you're telling them, you know, you're in Malibu. Are, are these people starting to get it there or what? They, they say I'm crazy. I say, okay. I, and I I'll say, agree. thank you. I say, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm thank crazy you. too. I'm crazy. Yeah. yeah. And so they, they, uh, so they, the, the, the professionals are the ones that have a hard time understanding this, whether it be a professional certified arborist or, or a, a mm -hmm. professor of, of, of soil scientist. Um, they, uh, they have a real hard time uh, understanding that process because they, they're just like the doctors. They have a real hard time understanding that the, f the quality of the food is better than the quantity of the food that you're mm -hmm. eating. And yep, so I've been yep. doing this a long, long time, and I'm not really sure if I've gotten uh, uh, any, any any traction <laughs> because it's it's all about money, and it, and it, they get so infiltrated with. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Zilly. <laughs> and, and, and it's all about money. It's all really all about money. Yeah. Um, it has nothing to do with be, being a good doctor or being a good gardener. It has to do with money. So yeah. money, 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 and so and that hasn't that, that seems to have gotten worse. The rich are getting rich. Remember that song? The rich are getting richer, and the poor are getting yeah. poor. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's kind of strange because the poor people are not really poor if you realize that their wealth is really in the soil. So mm -hmm. if you have a if you have an amazing garden, because that's what happens with a lot, some of my customers is that uh, they realize that the, the value of their garden is more than any money they can own. Yeah, they go out. They go well, out. You and can they feed eat. yourself if something goes wrong, and it's good, healthy food. And yeah, it, it, especially it's now, really especially healthy. now with uh, yeah. everything going on with the climate change and and all these yeah. other things, you can't go to the store. I mean, I go to the store and I look around. And I go, okay, I'm out because <laughs> they can't really buy anything. I even go to a health food place, that, and, and the science is conventionally grown and organically grown. I'm going. Right, it's like so. Let me, and I yeah. talk to the managers. Let me get this straight. What do you mean by conventionally grown? <laughs> what do you mean by convention? So I did this thing. I I used a refractometer, which we're going to talk about here, and I'll show you guys how to use it and everything. But I go to grow. I say, okay, let me get this conventionally grown apple and this organically grown apple. Let's look into the refractometer and see what it says. Yeah. And so the and the conventionally grown, lucky if it has a bricks level of ten. Yeah. Lucky. Organic grown is at bricks level of 28. And I tell the grocer, so which one would you buy? The grocer, I'll get the one with the higher bricks because it seems better. Mm -hmm. It is. It tastes better. It's got the minerals. And, 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 and it's it's a process that people uh, advertising, it, it's the same thing, medical doctors and, and agriculture. You watch TV and you, you, you're you taught that it's not it's, it's not the quality is the quantity that you, that yeah. you want to get and, yeah. and the food that you eat is nothing has nothing to do with your health or not or nor does the food that you give it the plants yeah i call it food for plants right when you, mm -hmm. when you think about fertilizer you think it's a non-living thing you, you just dump it around the plant. oh that's not a non-living thing that's that a, fertil a good properly done compost is so full of life you can't even call it a fertilizer. It's next level it's, to a fertilizer. It's not a fertilizer. It's not a fertilizer, right? It's not. It's not really a fertilizer. It. It. it it's actually. Um, I, I don't call it soil conditioner. I just call it. Uh, uh, to, I tell people, do you know the real reason why you make compost? People say, oh, we're, we're recycling. The real reason you're making compost is you're healing the soil. You put. Mm -hmm. You're helping the soil to be, maintain its, its function, which is life. That's yeah, the real reason the life why you back do it. into the soil. That's the real right. The real reason why you do it. It just so happens that it allows you to recycle everything, which is also good. It was like Mother Nature planned it that way for some reason, Andy. I don't know. What do you, What yeah. do you think? I think so. Uh, there's Diggy. I like that. Could put you, Could you put that up? Is this? Really yeah. Just long? hold on. Hold on. I just come on. It. I was telling my doctor today about the Brix refractometer. The plant health uh, and plant health making plants resistance to pests and nutrient density. He gets it, which is cool because a lot of doctors have no idea. So you got a good doctor, Diggity. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of doctors have the faintest idea what you're talking about. 
and they don't see, they don't they don't equate to it at all. They look at you with this face, you know, like, fine. So it means you don't want the, this medicine that I'm giving you. You don't want this drug. What are you saying? Right? You don't want to make the extra drug. money. Come on, where's my cut? Come on. And, and the refractometer is so cool because it's 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 a clear evidence that you're. A lot of times, I, I see. I I use a refractometer only to teach other people because if you're a good gardener. You don't need a refractometer. You go, wow, that's everything's going really good. The food's delicious. Uh, yeah. You know, if, if the food was bitter, I probably wouldn't eat it. And that's Mother Nature's way of saying eat the good sweet stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But I use it as proof, just like a soil test. We're gonna have a, on a as a guest here, a company that does uh, it's a soil lab company, and they do soil testing. But they they also uh, will test for your, your microbial life in the soil, the biology of the soil. He loves all that stuff. And uh, they're going to be on here and talk about that, how how you can do a soil test, because the soil test is also very good for you to understand where you're at. Somebody else is, if the company is telling you, you're, this is a condition of your soil, and you can't argue with it. And if you're doing the right thing, the soil condition will get better. The biology will, mm -hmm. will clearly get better. The pH will fall down to the right place. Uh, the, the nutritional content, the minerals will, will be there. It's all about yep. the minerals. It's what it comes down to all about minerals. It's, that's what it is. Well, it's the minerals. And, and that's why when we were talking about the compost uh, turners, I'm adding, you know, everything. I called it everything plus the kitchen sink into the mix to make sure I had all the micronutrients in my soil structure before I started. And then I just made sure I had the biology to work with it. So what I what I do and I learned I learned this is the hard way is that it takes a long time to get the soil back in shape. You can't say, come back next month. Oh, everything is fine now. No. It takes years and years and years to get the biology back in shape of the soil. Because you think about it, one lady was there 30 years, constantly hauling everything away, nothing there. And she expected one treatment, me to go there and make magically the soil come back to life. I said, Doesn't Well, you actually have to haul in a whole bunch of brand new good topsoil that you had made yourself, put it down, and went, there, there you go. Now you got another 30 years, lady. Pay yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what's one of the things I tell people, I, I work a lot with the local companies that make uh, compost. And uh, and I, 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 I originally, I had a hard time teaching them, no, you don't want to add urea to your soil. No, you don't want to do that. Yes, you need that for growing. No, 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 no. Well, why don't you want it? Because it kills the micro biology. No, 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 don't do that. So, so some of them have gotten, and oh, it's cheaper. You don't have to spend the money for your, the urea, you know. They don't yeah, want to yeah. add the rock dust to it because, it, again, it's money, you know. You don't yeah, need yeah. a lot of rock dust to be adding to it when you're making compost, you know. But what is it? Let's just say Jack Pitt doctor that got to get help more than the unhealthy looking guy. Yeah, you have to have a, a doc. Uh, yeah, I, I have a friend. You don't want a big fat slob as a doctor. You want somebody that's fit yeah. and healthy. Yeah. Right, exactly. I have a very, I have a very good doctor. Uh, he's in the seventies. Uh, he runs circles around most people. Uh, he's a, he's a vegan. He doesn't eat meat, <laughs> you know. And he understands a, a lot of the process. I have no problem with meat. If you lived on a farm, you took care of the animals, and you didn't torture them. You fed them happily, and they, and they, and they provided you food, and you treated them with respect. But that's not the case. <laughs> that's not the case. That happens the same thing with eggs and chickens and torture. I don't like all that stuff. So that's one reason why I try to eat vegetables mainly. You know, I, I'm learning how to do cook. Because my wife used to cook for me. Amish, there you go. And, and, and Amish happens to be very, very good at that because they are not into any of this bullshit stuff. They've been doing what you're we're talking about for you know since they've ever been here. Since that's they came from the old country, they were exactly. doing it there. They even make their own the toilet land. paper, right? They even make yeah. their own toilet paper. That's how far they yeah. go, right? You see what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. They're not very. They don't like electricity that much. They don't like cell phones. So all this stuff is really good, but. It, it, it's a pro, it's a process that you have to teach people, and so it, it, going back to the soil, and that's the whole cornerstone of, of life, and people don't understand mm -hmm. that. I mean, if if we keep going in this direction, we're basically going to have a sterile planet. People will won't be they'll have a, like a big a big shield around their home, and maybe a big shield around the city, 
And are we gonna have that. bubble boys? We're gonna all be bubble boys. We're gonna live in our own little private bubble and just go along about our day. Uh, what does it say? Do you have to be Hamish? Silly. You don't have to. You don't need to. No, no. Don't you have to be Amish? Just curious to have an Amish doctor. Don't you have to be Amish? Is is uh, so? Oh yeah. I, 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 NASA if I would guess so. I would guess so. Uh, but Amish doctors deals with Amish people. You know, I, I would think. You know, they. But they I think an crazy. Amish doctor would go. Yeah, I'll, I'll take fifty bucks to see. You. I'll tell you. Yeah, you're an idiot. You're doing this. You're doing this. You're doing this. What are you doing? <laughs> and they will. And, and they, they will run out. They will run out. This is not what I wanted. I wanted some drug to take to make me feel better. <clears throat> it's 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 very weird, and it's getting it's, it's gotten a lot worse. Mm -hmm. Especially since we did the uh, uh, the industrial revolution. Do you know about the industrial revolution? You know what happened in the industrial revolution? Wait, wait. A couple of days ago, somebody made some factory, and actually, there there's the old stamp mills were what ran by air pressure. They trapped a river, put uh, it down. They dug a big pit, captured the air, right, that was coming off the water underground. And that's how they powered the stamp mills was with compressed air back in the day in Ontario. And we've why aren't we using that kind of a technology today? It's a lot more efficient. So the hmm. so the Industrial Revolution basically is when they started using fertilizers, chemical fertilizers. After World War Two or World War One, when they had the, yeah. the munitions and oh, we got all this stuff we and it's not being used right now. So why don't we sell it to these idiots over here and, and that's teach the, them and program them to use it and they'll and like that, it and they'll own and nothing. That, and that's the time when carbon emissions started to take off. That and your local volcano. Yeah, that's the time. Well, you know, the local volcano. I personally like volcanoes because they are Mother Nature's uh, natural fertilizers. They really well, do a good job of spreading the minerals yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. but they put I mean? out more carbon emissions in a, in, in a very short amount of time than, than anything than else. Other suckers, you know. And, and the the system of uh, carbon uh, taking, I think, I think it, I, I have a hard time pronouncing it, but it's carbon system equation. What is it called? You know what I'm talking about? When they take carbon emission. No, it's just. It's a it's a strange name. I have a hard time pronouncing it, but basically it means that carbon goes into the soil or goes into the water. Sequestration. There you go. That's the one. Sequestration. Right. Yes, the other, and they're talking about putting it underground. Well, it doesn't necessarily underground. The ocean does that too. Yeah. The ocean yeah. takes in carbon. And both and, both, and there both. is our audience. You know, is, we have a very intelligent audience because. Yeah. It wasn't just one, it was two that went, hey, I know that word. Thanks, guys. Exactly right. And so we have pretty much stopped that process of allowing Mother Nature to take in carbon. Yeah. You see? Well, the, the fungal hyphae store it. The fungal hyphae, uh, if they hit a rock and they move on, that empty void, they pack it full of freaking carbon. Yeah. And we want, you know, and then you're actually having life in the soil and I don't know. I don't think they really want us to, to understand, but we're just going to keep telling people, Andy, and, and we're going to keep tell, moving forward. I tell people that the what's interesting is that Mother Nature's, the, the soil biology uses carbonic acid. And carbonic okay. acid is from yeah. carbon. To, yeah. That's what they use to break down all the minerals. They break down the minerals. Mm -hmm. We don't use carbonic acid in our bodies because we're supposed to be eating other things that have already broken it down for us. Yeah. That's why you, have you tried like eating rock dust? Have you tried eating rock dust lately? It's kind of chewy. It's kind of gritty. You know, actually, I have been when I was down in in the Kootenays at the Unicorn Music Festival. I ate a lot of rock dust because it was dry, dry, and it's taken weeks for my lungs to clear up from the dust. Okay, so I have been eating some lately. So, but yeah, it didn't taste that good. And your body cannot process it. It's just to say, what the heck is this stuff? What the heck is this stuff? So it, it comes down to the soil, and, and the, the, the main problem is, is that we, most of us, 99% of the people on the planet, have no idea that the soil is really more valuable than, than, than money. The life in the soil that creates that food that tastes so much better than money, and, and it actually will keep you alive, where money, eating money just, 
it doesn't have the same taste and flavor and doesn't really satisfy, you know. I know a person that uh, takes the soil, adds some distilled water to it, makes some mud, makes some mud baths, and puts it on his body. Yeah. And the yeah. body, and he swears that it sucks up any toxins. And I'm pretty sure it does. Well, uh, mud baths have been around for how many for tens of time. thousands of years globally. I had a friend actually, she brought uh, mud in from the Dead Sea into Edmonton, had her own uh, studio where she was doing mud baths. It was like big money, man. There's a place in uh, San Diego. Uh, it's called, uh, it's a San, it's a hot mud bath place. Mm -hmm. And it's right on top of a, um, of an ancient uh, volcano that's below, uh, underground. And it, it's still hot. It's still bubbling up, up hot. So it's and, got a hot springs underneath the building? You know, the, the structure, the place where it's at is all yeah. meant you go there and the bubbles. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've and, got some like radium hot springs. It's it's built into the side of the mountain, man. It's just yeah, beautiful. that's where Marietta. Especially in the right? winter, the snow falling down. It's beautiful. It's Mar it's Marietta. Marietta, I David. That, I think that's a place in Southern California, right? Where it's at. It sounds it sounds I'm right because one of the things my friend does, he goes and gets his. He made a deal with the with the company there, and he turns it into a, or he lets it dry and he sells it. As uh, as a as a rock does because it's aluminum clay, it's got thirty percent calcium in it. Really, really good uh, for the soil because calcium is very important for living things, for plants. Uh, one of the problems with uh, everything is calcium deficiency. Yeah. See, yeah. so calcium calcium helps make all the other minerals available. Without the calcium, you're gonna have you're gonna be uh, problems with with uh, absorbing minerals. Eating, mm -hmm. the plants won't get the minerals. They're going to get diseases. One of the things I teach people is all about the minerals. Uh, whenever you have a disease, whether it's in your body or whether it's in the soil, it's a trace mineral deficiency. It comes down to as simple as that. In San Diego County, exactly right. And I go down there every once in a while and soak myself in, but I try to get a couple of bags of the stuff to, to, to uh, take home with me, you know. And I, yeah. I try to eat it, but I, I don't really like it. But I do like putting it on on the body, and I also make a tea out of it and spray. I put it in mm -hmm. a, a little tea bag. Let's sit. Actually, I found a new way. A young lady I met at uh, um, one of the festivals here uh, for tea is since you mentioned tea, uh, taking a little piece of bud, make a tea. Just take a little piece of bud and throw it in your tea, and you. The, the heat will decarb it, I guess, and you drink that, and I guess it's supposed to be pretty good. I haven't tried it yet, so I'll try it. It actually, it, it'll work. It'll actually work. I I have one of those little metal things. I have little holes in it for you. you put your tea in it. I put some butter yeah, in yeah, there yeah. and let us let us. Yeah, steep. for the loose leaf tea. Yeah, yeah. let it let it let us steep in there. Uh, I yeah. try not to make it really super hot, like boiling. You don't really want. Well, she's boil. saying a pea size. Do a pea size. Yeah, just a, a little tiny, hunk of buds. A yeah. tiny, a tiny little bit. Yeah, you can drink that. So it comes, it comes down to uh, the the teaching process is how you do how you do it. And what what I started yeah. to concentrate on is children. The children, well, they are the next generation, you know. You know we, uh, we have to teach them what the hell is going on if we want to survive later on. Come on. You know, a lot of kids have the famous idea that food comes from the soil. They really don't. So I went to this one place. I did some raised beds for them. And they says, what are we doing? We're going to grow food. Are we, we going to go to the store shopping? Says, no, we're going to grow it. Grow it? And, and they said, they go, well, well, wait a minute. You don't go to the store and buy it? <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> done roofing yeah what a pillar <laughs> cod podcast to unwind to i bet i bet uh but and i that just threw me off because roofing is i hope he's not adding tar and stuff like that up there or maybe it's just you know putting the the wood down stuff because I, I i wouldn't want to work around tar that stuff is really toxic well that's generally flat roofs uh up in canada we use a lot of shingles which are sheets yeah. of tar but it's it's not uh you're not actually having to, to melt tar and so, water roofing. So, but. so what I did was is I I, uh, I, I learned to uh, – kids are impatient. They want to see something grow. So I, 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 go, I buy radishes. They come up in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and you know, I go and I come back in a week, and the, and the teacher says the kids have pulled up all the plants because they want to see it, and then they stuck them back in again. 
So they yeah. would pull the plant out. Oh, look, look. And then we'll stick it back in again. And I said, you just okay, killed it. Go at, go at, uh, uh, a year or two up in the school for age of kids, and, and maybe they'll be uh, to the point where they'll want to actually see it grow grow a little bit. Right, right. So that's that was that was that's because in this school that I go to, it's a private school, and they have all the different ages together. You know. Oh, okay, okay. So right. the young kids, the young kids are there reefing on, it, and the older ones are the ones putting it back in, going, "You're not supposed to do that." And, and the other, older ones, what they're doing is they're going home and starting a raised bed, and starting to grow cool. the vegetables. Cool, stuff. man. Congrats. And, and they're learning how to make the make the raised bed. Uh, I tell them don't yeah. use pressure treated wood. That kind of stuff. Pressure treated has got the wrong gas. They put the toxic gas in there, ends up in your soil too, as well. Yeah, yeah. And they and and then, and then what the one of the problems they do is they go to the local nursery and they buy junk seeds and junk plants. Yeah. And by junk well, the plants just... at the nursery, Andy, think about it. The plants are at the nursery are fed daily. So they're actually a, almost a hydroponic. Um, they love the cocaine of the of the feeding. You take them home, only some plants are gonna go live through the shock of all of a sudden having to find their own food. Well, not only that, but they're sprayed with chemicals all the time. Yeah, yeah. every day. Every, uh, every all the day. time. And I, yeah. I have a friend that works in the nurseries. So we have to get these plants in and out. And once it's, it's your, in your home, we don't care what you do. So one lady says, I'm organic. I buy it and then I, I grow them organically. I go, well, because it's genetics too. You know, if you if you yeah. grow genetically, if, if you grow, I, I, I grow heirloom organic seeds. Means that these cool. have been grown for centuries organically, and these seeds are uh, are bred to be grown organically. Whereas if you yeah. decide to grow something organically, the seeds will not do well. You're going to have to, and they will just die on you. They have one problem or another. That's a that's an issue people have is they they think it's natural for a plant to get diseases, and you just learn to spray it with something. Yeah, he says I don't want to know about. Need- he says, I don't want to know about growing or anything or a soil. Just tell me what to spray. Mm, yeah. See, right? And right on, Duff Nugs. Yeah. Just tell me what to spray. So I said, fine. You can spray garlic. Garlic, I don't want to spray garlic. You just give me a camera. Why are you talking to me? Go to the guy. He'll tell you. Garlic is a very, it's, it will kill any bug. Gar- I, the, the two things I use is garlic and cold brew coffee. And it's organic, yeah, yeah. you know, cold brew coffee, uh, one cup of uh, cold oh, brew you coffee. Oh, you your organic coffee. Now I'm drinking organic coffee, okay? That's right. Like... And organic yeah. coffee is rich in the trace minerals, rich in iron, calcium, all that stuff. And so so right now food. you're telling me my coffee is actually good for me. Okay, that's really bad because I drink too much coffee already, Andy. Come on. Go, be nice to me, man. I want to sleep yeah. sometime, you know. Coffee is actually good for you, but again, you have to do go in moderation. So my coffee is like 10% coffee. It's really 10% coffee, and the rest of it is it's, uh, uh, adaptogens, uh, mushrooms adapt- adaptogens that, that I use. I have a variety of different mushrooms that I put into it. Uh, Paul Stamets would love me because I, I'm constantly buying his stuff to, to, put ah, in, go, go. to put in my compost. I mean, we might even get him on. Uh, as a guest here, because he's really very good. Uh, he wrote, "Oh yeah, yeah. How mushrooms can save the earth." Yeah, and I've actually I, I've I've followed the man for probably uh, a decade or more of him making videos on YouTube, and I've never actually met him. No, so he, he uh, actually helps people grow all different kinds yeah. of mushrooms on their property. So you, yeah. and that's really cool because they start to understand the, how the biology works. If, I have a customer that called me up the other day. There's mushrooms growing everywhere. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I says, and what are you doing? Well, the gardener's raking them all up and throwing everything away. And I go, holy shit. <laughs> right? 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 Oh, they, uh, no, and, I and, know. And, 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 they say, and I said, you know, they're growing because I sprayed them on there. Because one of the things I spray is I, 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 I buy a different variety of mushroom spores. And I make yeah, them yeah. and I spray them. And to me, if the mushrooms are growing, you should be happy because the biology of the soil is working. But they don't, you had to actually explain that to them. So if they saw it, they would know what it was and they wouldn't go, well, freaky Andy. You should have uh, said, okay, well, 
you're hoping to see this. If you see this, it's really good. It's very Don't difficult. It's very it difficult up. to cover everything to these people. To these people, so I just tell. <laughs> I just I tell. I tell pretty much what what it is on spraying. See, I tell them that yeah. the, the product that I invented is called <laughs> super, super seaweed. It's a microbiological activator. Yeah, yeah. So you guys can get it on Andy's website. But Andy, I I actually have a hard deadline tonight because. I actually have to pack up my. I know my you got one. Here. You have thirty seconds. Yeah, I I, I have to actually uh, take a thirteen hour drive. So you're going I'm again. Get but we're done. Listen, guys, go to my website. I appreciate you going to my website and signing up for the newsletter. I also really appreciate that you're going to my YouTube channel. I know a lot of you are going up there and signing up and and watching this my podcast. And I really do appreciate that. So thank you very much. Remember, my book is called Don't Panic, It's Organic. You will love it because it's yep. all about the biology. It's, that's what it really is all about. Every disease, every pest. So we're going to go yep. now, and he's going to go drive off and so never, never well, land. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to gonna tell him uh, that Leah Oram is coming up tomorrow with uh, uh, on the sun and the moon. Um, Alex has had a family emergency, uh, so she won't be there, but Luna will be. Um, I'll be doing it back end from Vancouver and uh then we have do 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 uh actually i think double john burfellow on monday uh og's power hour in the morning and then um, i've suckered him to come on with layton uh and talk about some of the crazy stuff he's been doing uh for decades in the afternoon so uh and of course the live stream on friday is supposed to start at 4 20 pacific running till 11 o'clock uh we've got pot fights uh we got pillow fights we have uh basically with those water squirt guns and everybody has seven to fight what's that it's seven o'clock you gotta go yeah i know i know i got a long drive anyway guys love y'all and uh we'll see you on air thank tomorrow. you guys